David Anderson has become synonymous with global black wealth. Whether he's shaping policies at the World Economic Forum, playing key roles within political circles on both sides, mastering the art of building unshakable wealth on an international scale, or breaking down barriers so that black men around the world can win. David is the world's best kept financial secret weapon. From the ghettos of Southside Chicago to the Obama White House, to the homes of billionaire moguls, David's receipts stretch well beyond million dollar bank accounts, African royal families, or celebrity inner circles. But I believe that they did something that all of us can do. David's true gift is in single-handedly positioning everyday brothers to become global millionaires. Why? Because it's about damn time we own what's ours and have a real seat at the table. Money, power, respect. Uh, I met Dave about four years ago. My first business cracked seven figures and it was actually an interesting time to meet Dave because I oftentimes say you can't just be wealthy overnight. You actually gotta have somebody to teach you the game. And DA kind of stepped in and um, took me and my business partner on his wing and showed us how to kind of maneuver this very dangerous game that we play called business. And within six months, DA was actually able to help us obtain a $200,000 line of credit. And then six months after that, he actually helped us secure a $3 million line of credit uh, that we were able to um, obtain real estate. After sitting down with David and going through some ideas and some concepts, <laughs> in the first six, seven months, I think we did roughly about $10 million together. It's an exceptional, exceptional program. And David did something for me that no one else had ever done. He taught me the power of global expansion and really understanding the importance of an international network um, and how we can build on that network. Him and I have done projects that surpassed the 20, 30 million dollar mark. My life has changed in more ways than one for the better from the development of our relationship. And I'm just so happy that you have brought me in to the fold and have shown me how important the power of a network internationally from a professional perspective or a personal perspective can be. And I'm ever so grateful. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome, 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 man, to One Million Black Men. Welcome to One Million Black Men. Please, gentlemen, as you're coming in, um, today's lesson is going to be really amazing, uh, insightful as we go through things. Please, I ask you, I see you, Brian. I see you, James. I see you, uh, Giants, Brian, all the others. Please share, like. If you're on Facebook, real quick, tell them that we're talking global tonight. We're talking global tonight, so please share, like, all of it, because we're going in. I just want to make sure, as a mic check, can everybody hear me? I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. If you can hear me, say I can hear you. If you can hear me, say I can hear you, all right? All right. <clears throat> we're going to get into global business today, right? Global business, um, the insightfulness into how to move globally, how to do things globally. Uh, Ripper, thank you for joining, brother. Thank you for joining. Um, how to do things globally, all the nuances in doing global uh, business, how to look at it, how to get into it. Um, if you're thinking about doing business globally, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're at, no matter who you're involved with, right? Thank you, Christopher. You can hear me. No matter who you're involved with, talking about global business tonight. Let me just say again, why we started One Million Black Men is real simple, right? Three things. We're going to help free black, black men psychologically. Number two, we're going to free black men financially as well as economically. And the third thing is, is that we're going to help with wealth creation for the next seven generations. Again, wealth creation for the next seven generations. So again, like, please share. We're going to go into these nuances about doing business globally, um, across the globe, um, by background, you guys saw my background. You know, I've done business. Well, I've traveled first. I've traveled to, I think my count is 51 of 52 countries. It's somewhere around 50 something. Um, um, but I've done business in 18 countries. And again, when we talk about doing business, like really doing business in those countries, right? Really doing business um, from a global scale, right? Asia, 
Africa, Europe, uh, South America, actually doing business in those countries, having to deal with all of the uh, nuances around um, language, right? Language around cultural tastes, all of those things, doing business across the globe. And so one thing, what's up, Quentin Bishop? Good to see you, brother. Um, one, one thing I'm really, really, really conscious of is that in this next phase, again, I'm talking to black men, although I know many other people are also joining us around, you know, different places and different spaces. Um, I'm very conscious of as black men, I got to tell you, I actually think we have some strategic advantages doing business globally, doing business cross continentally, right? I actually think we have some strategic advantages. I want to talk about that as well. But let's talk about, right, how to make money globally, how to make money globally. Now, I'm going to hit on, just so you, heads up, I'm going to hit on the product business and I'm going to hit on brothers who are in the service business, right? And then I'm going to talk about a real big word today, right? The whole thing is going to, what I'm, I'm kind of learning this space. Thank you, brothers. First off, thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for uh, loving me. Um, embracing what we what we're doing. I'm trying to do this thing as raw as I can. I'm trying to do this thing very natural. Um, I'm giving you insights from the business that I've done, not what anyone told me, not just the books, although I will talk about theory, but what I've done and what's happened, also what I've seen other Black men do. So I want you all to learn, just so you know, like real, true, blue skills and things that you can take with you and you can apply today, tomorrow, next week, and really get things done. So the first thing, right? All right. Now, this is going to seem kind of obvious, but believe it or not, it's not obvious. I see a lot of people that try to say, hey, I'm doing global business. Okay? So they go in and they're like, yo, I do global business. Like, man, like I'm selling product in X somebody... I don't even know somewhere bought, bought, bought product from me, right? Now, we have, just so you know, 1 million black men. When we started off, we have 10,000 plus people that are kind of part of our, our group so far. We got brothers from Brazil. We got brothers from um, China. We got brothers in the Middle East, all over, right? Just because, myth number one, I just wanted to hit this out. Just because somebody is viewing you watching you, right? Or they bought your product online that they saw it. Does not mean that you're in global business. There's a big difference, right? Somebody can actually find you, purchase something from you or watch you, right? But that's not what I would define as global business. When you're making money globally and you're doing global business, you actually are, right? You actually have what I call transaction in the country, right? So it's one thing for my brother who's in the, in the chat, man, Cassie, welcome from Fort Worth, Texas. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. My brother who's from Brazil, who's watching me today, right? That's one thing, okay? It's another thing for me to meet up with my brother in Brazil, right, and us do a deal, do a transaction either in Brazil or with the U.S. and Brazil, but we actually do a deal type of transaction. I'm going to go through that today and kind of how that works and how that happens, because some of you all in here, you have ideas or you have businesses, and literally, you don't even know you have a customer base, you have a client base, you have a large transaction that's waiting for you in another country, right? But what's the first thing we got to do? The first thing we got to do if you're going to do global business, the first thing is travel. Now, everyone's like, well, duh, duh. Like, of course I got to travel. You know how many people I meet? This is real talk. This is real talk. Who say, oh, I'm doing business in China. Now, mind you guys, I lived in China for three and a half years, right? Oh, I'm doing business in China. But they've never been to China. Okay, so I want you to understand something. I understand. I get it, right? You found a product on Alibaba 
or you found a product or something else. We're we going to get into that. All right. We're going to get into that. But you, because you order something, like that's like saying, hey, I bought my computer. The computer I'm on right now, right? It's Apple. Anybody ever seen the Apple product? What does it say? It says designed in California, but what? Made in China. So it's like me saying like, yo, I bought the Apple computer. Therefore, like I do business in China. No, you don't. You, you just purchased something. You are a consumer to something or you bought and sold something. But don't pretend like you had a global businessman, right? Because you have an Apple computer. No, you don't, right? The person who's doing global business with Apple computers is the person who has the distributorship of Apple computers or they're manufacturing Apple computer parts or they found a component to make and now they're trading those products with Apple computers. Does that make sense? That makes sense, guys, in the chat. Just put a one in the chat. I just want to make sure everyone's tracking with me. Right. Of what I'm saying, if that makes sense to you guys, put a one in the chat. Right. There's a difference between consuming product on the global marketplace. Right. And actually becoming a business person where you're actually doing business. Right. In a global marketplace. All right. Thank you so much, guys. I want to make sure I was making that clear. So, look, you got to travel. That's first off. You will get listen to me. You will get taken to the bank. And you will eventually get scammed if you are ordering product or trying to do business in a country you have not been to. Now, it may not happen right now. It may not happen tomorrow. But I want you to hear me. This is how this game works. Because without relationship, without relationship, okay, even in the era of Zoom, look, we have Zoom. And Zoom is phenomenal. And Zoom is incredible. And all the virtual means we have. I'm telling you right now. If you're looking to do business on a global scale, if you are not looking to travel to that country or go to that place at least once, because when you go there, guess what you're going to gain? You're going to gain something called perspective. And you need perspective to do business, meaning this. OK, I'm going to give you guys an example. This is this is a true story. I'll give you an example. I was just um, I was doing a, a transaction. Um, um, I'll give you I'll give you guys some some some, some of my uh, failures and successes. So I was doing a transaction. We're trying to do a transaction in the in the um, actually in Eastern Europe um, in the, in the Ukraine. Okay, um, there was some some products, some things we were trying to do because we were basically uh, supplying water and some other stuff. Uh, to the, the 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 things that are happening in the Ukraine early on when the situation first hit. Okay. Now, mind you, I've done business. I told you guys in 18 countries. Listen to me. I've done business in 18 countries. And let me be a hundred with y'all. This deal, I won't even give the number because it makes me sick. <laughs> okay. This was an eight-figure transaction. Let me be very clear with you guys. An eight-figure, a hefty eight-figure transaction. And can I tell you guys, I did not travel to the region, obviously, because there's war going on, some nuances. I tried to get over to, to Poland and some other places, but I, I, I just didn't have the capacity to travel. Now, mind you, we had WhatsApp meetings, multiple WhatsApp meetings. We had multiple Zooms. We had multiple, you name it. All the video conferencing you can do. My transaction and deal fell apart. And I know why it, it fell apart. Because I did not travel to the region. I did not look them in the eye. Okay. I did not sit down with them face to face. And there were perspectives. Although I've been to Eastern Europe many times. Romania, Ukraine, Moldova, um, uh, 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 um, Moldova, uh, Slovenia. I, I've been to Eastern Europe. I've traveled Eastern Europe and the Eastern Bloc. But because I was not sitting down, and I know this, and I kick myself and I look back at it, I kick myself because I lost in that transaction an eight-figure opportunity, but I should have got up and I should have traveled. Man, if you feeling that real quick, bro, 
brothers, put travel in the chat, <laughs> right? Hey, I'm, t I'm telling I'm being 100 with y'all. Like, I lost an eight-figure opportunity because I did not get off my butt and just travel. And the first thing you have to do is that you have to travel. I want you to tell a brother to travel. That's what we to travel in the chat. Brothers, travel. Especially you guys, the single guys, especially you ain't got no kids, no family, nothing like that. Bro, you should be globe trotting, like getting perspective, insight. Look, I'm all for whatever country you're in, UK, Canada, the US, your home country is great. But I got to tell you guys, travel opens up your mind in a way where you get perspective in a way that nobody can take from you, right? When you gain that experience, nobody can take it from you. And so you need that. All right, next thing, okay? Here we are. Let's talk about a word I'm about to give, okay? This is, a, this is going to be a word for the night. And it's going to be a word that I want to um, I want to give this word. Some of you all know this word. You might know it. Some of you guys have never heard this word, okay? But this is the word I want you all to write down and put in. And this word I'm about to give you to somebody on here is worth right now thousands of dollars. It's worth to somebody a million plus dollars. I'm about to give you a word. And I'm going to break this down because the rest of the night, for the next 15, 20 minutes, this is all we're going to go through. And I'm going to really break this down, okay? And that word is arbitrage. Now, I told y'all, look, we're doing something different here at One Million Black Men. I know y'all see these videos out. People got these videos and they got this, you know, they be having this stuff and, you know, all of this talking, right? Okay. Like, I expect, if you listening to me, I expect you to be part of the top 10%. Remember, W.B. Du Bois talked about the talented 10th. I expect, if you are not the talented 10th, I expect your level of thinking to go up to the talented 10th and above. So I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to just dumb everything down, right? I know we live in a dumb, dumbing down society. I think one of our challenges is that we're dumbing too much stuff down for people. We have to think and raise our level. Look, if you want to raise your level of income, you have to raise your level of thinking. If you want to raise your level of income, you got to raise your level of thinking. So what is an arbitrage? Man, I learned this word. You got to learn this word. I learned this word when I was in New York. I was on, on Wall Street, and I was working with some of the most successful Wall Street dudes, right? Um, and I remember being out to dinner and just hanging out. And these dudes, they were like in their 40s, 50s. I mean, these guys had made tens of millions, if not billions of dollars. And they were like, yo, man, I'm looking for the next arbitrage, looking for the next arbitrage. I'm like, arbitrage? And I kind of had a working understanding of it, but I was like, arbitrage, right? So what is an arbitrage? Our arbitrage is this. I'm going to explain it from like a def definition perspective, but then we're going to break it down and how it changes you in global business, but it also would change how you think about business, right? So basically what it is, it's basically you are taking advantages of tiny differences, between price and different assets in a market. What do I mean by, I'll say this again. You're basically taking advantage, right? I was using the word exploit, but I know exploit in America doesn't really work that well. Um, so I'm gonna use the word, the, the word uh, um, instead of saying exploit, like you're, you're, you're learning to profit. You're learning to profit, okay? You're learning to profit from different differences in a market right, in a market, okay, between identical or similar items or assets, okay? Similar items or assets, for some reason, are, are priced or there's differences in markets. All right, break this down. David, bring it home for me. Let me bring it home for you. Ready? Anybody in this chat remember when people 
were when people used to stand outside in lines to buy the new Jordans. I need you to put a one in the chat. Now, if I put an MJ in the chat, put an MJ in the chat. If you remember when people used to stand outside and wait in line for hours to buy the new Jordans. All right, I got Chris, Dwayne. All right, y'all already heard him what's going on, right? Y'all remember this, right? Ripper, thank you, Sam, all y'all, right? So, all right, so people wait in line, right? All the time. It, it still happens, it just happens online now, right? The buy the new mics. They all want to buy the new Jordans, okay? What would happen? The store would sell out. Right? So the Jordans at that time, like $150, 200 $250, right? Okay? So the store sells out, right? So what happens? Man, didn't the prices go up? Now, how do you guys have been in places? Hold on. You were in places. You may have been in other neighborhoods or other places where the Jordans were not selling out. People were not in line. So what you had some people doing, they got real smart, right? They went to the neighborhoods where there was no lines to get the Jordans. And they bought the Jordans at regular price, $150, right? Some rural neighborhood or wherever it was. They, they bought it somewhere, right? They bought the mics, the, the new Michael Jordan gym shoe. So they bought it for $150. And then they went over to the neighborhoods where they were all sold out. And they were selling them for... 350, 300, 400, 500, right? Okay, and anybody understand? Remember this stuff happening? Just put a one in the chat real quick. I'm going to break this down, right? Now, people were doing this and they were just taking advantage. Like, yo, there was supply and there was demand. There was supply, there was demand. There was supply, there was demand. But what they were doing was that it was the same product, the same product, right? But they were taking advantage of the fact that there was a price difference and a demand difference. Although it was the same state, city, region, country, that is called, gentlemen, an arbitrage. You understand? Same, same product, but all of a sudden it's, less, it's more valuable or less valuable because of a different country, a different state, a different city, because of supply and demand. OK, so what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say, when you're looking at global business, you must start to look at arbitrage. There's some there's some businesses in here right now. There's some brothers right now. You do something with your hands. Oh, oh, you ready for this? You ready for this? Here's an example. You ready for this? There's a guy on this chat right now. You're an electrician or you're a plumber or something to that degree. Right. In America right now. Right. In America, you're going to get paid whatever, 30, 40, 50, whatever dollars an hour, right? But there's places in Canada where they paying you double for the same work that's called an arbitrage. You understand what I'm saying, right? There are people right now that are doing what we call outsourced labor, okay? We call them sometimes virtual assistants. We call them call center reps, all that stuff, right? What's happening? In America... You would have to pay that if you had that same assistant or call center rep. If you're in America, the UK or Canada, you'd have to pay them $20, $30 an hour to represent you, right? But what happens? Somebody in the Philippines, Africa, India, they learned English. Hold on. They learned English well enough and good enough. And they said, you know what? You ain't got to pay us $30 an hour. You can pay us $7 an hour. Hold on. That sounds good. $7 an hour? You can pay us $7 an hour. Well, guess what? In their country, the average wage is $4 an hour. So they're winning. That's called, gentlemen, arbitrage. Same product, same service, same product, but taking advantage of price dislocation, taking advantage of supply and demand, right? Supply demand curves, okay? 
man, if this is good, yo, I want I need some feedback from y'all in the chat. Let me know if y'all rocking with this. You're like, yo, I never thought like this is man, this is open to my eyes. Some of you guys here, give me some feedback in the chat. Let me know how you feel. Like some of you all in here, literally, you've been doing this in parts of your life. You've actually been doing this. And you didn't even know that you were doing it. Thank you, Dr. Marlon. Appreciate you, man. Like, like you, you were doing this not even knowing that this is what you've been doing. You've been taking advantage, advantage of arbitrages. Okay? So know this word. Understand what you're doing. Thank you, Christopher Mackin. Thank you, brother. You are taking advantage of arbitrage. OK, arbitrage. Now, how does this apply? Let's go into real life and knock this out. And then we out of here. Right. All right. Here we go. So. If you have a product, we're going to do this real quick, you have a product, right? It's a new world now. So this is a real way to test out what the arbitrage is. All right. Thank you, Terrence. Sam, I see you. Dwayne, I see you. I see everybody. I'm so happy, man. Y'all loving this. Appreciate y'all for loving this. So now that we have influencers, I'm telling you, look, even for me. This is what has opened up my mind with social media now, right? The influencer market has opened up an ability to test different products and services without you having to go all in on a market. Usually, if you had a product, when Coca-Cola, when Mars Candy, when they all had to expand in different countries, guess what they had to do? They had to set up a factory. They had to buy, they had to buy billboards and advertising. They had to go into these countries. And they had to spend a lot of money to expand, a lot of money to expand. But guess what happened? With social media now, you can find an influencer, somebody that has a really good follower base. They're in Colombia. They're in South Africa. They're in China, right? And you basically can pay them a little bit amount of money to promote your product. So for a couple hundred dollars, right? Or for sometimes a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or less, wait, you can use the influencers in another market to test your product to see if your product has demand. And also you can test to see how much are people willing to pay for the product. Y'all see that? That's a whole different play we didn't even have five, seven years ago, right? So you're looking at a product space, you want to go global, find the influencer in that market over there in that, in that country, okay? You're going to get them and you're going to hire them, hey, to post, to do whatever, to test out your product to see if the demand exists in that market, okay? All right? Number two, okay? Number two. If you have a product, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it, Bill. Thank you for acknowledging the great information. Appreciate that. Hey, if you have, if you're creating something, okay, you got a product or something like that, you want to check out, right, if it can be drop shipped. If there is a company that makes that product, that you can privately label. And look, we'll, that's a whole lesson right there, private labeling. That's a whole, that's a whole series. We're going to do a whole masterclass on private labeling, okay? Private labeling, how you can make a bunch of money private labeling, okay? This, this 1 million black men, this is meant, guys, to be like, we're going to go to gamut. Again, I'm not doing a trick. This ain't no pony show. We're not doing some, you know, hey, guys, come do what I'm doing and come get, no, 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 this is not it. Number two, your product you can drop ship. What is drop shipping? Drop shipping is basically you're paying for a product that you do not carry as inventory. You didn't manufacture, you didn't make it, okay? You're putting your brand on it and then someone else is shipping it out on behalf of you, okay? You see a lot of drop shipping in what I call the t-shirt industry. A lot of drop shipping in the t-shirt industry, right? They're not making it, they're not, they're not, nothing like that. They're literally putting their brand on it, right? And then the manufacturer ships it out to whoever is doing dropship, right? So it's called dropshipping. There's a whole, this is a whole space 
It's a whole industry, but it's a great way to obviously arbitrage as well, right? You find differences in the market. If you are in services, if you are in services, ready for this? Write this down, right? In service business, this is what you want to do. You want to find something that's your normal, okay? I want you guys to put my, uh, my team, put this up on the screen. Find something that's your normal, but in another market, it's abnormal, all right? Find something that's your normal, but in other markets, it's abnormal when it comes to services, all right? When it comes to services, find something, again, that's your normal, that's abnormal somewhere else, okay? All right. What does this mean? Thank you so much, team, for putting that up, all right? One of the biggest service spaces where this applies is food, all right? For those of us in countries, you know, that's not China, we all know this. All of us like a little bit of Chinese food, right? Well, guess what? Most of us in these countries that are not China, we're not Chinese, okay? So what? who, who creates the Chinese restaurant? The Chinese. And we purchase their food, right? Because it's not normal in our market, right? I can speak for America, right? We're burger, fries, some spaghetti maybe, some meatloaf, and some other stuff, right? That's how we are in America. So Chinese food, although we have a lot of them now, that's somebody taking their normal, taking it to the market that's abnormal, all right? I'll give you another, another example. Some of y'all don't even know about this. There's a bunch of brothers who went to China. I'm using China for a good example. And they brought trap music to China. I wish I had a video on it. I want to actually, I wish I could do it. Um, uh, I told my team real quick. Is there a way that I could pull up? Damn, I don't think there's a way I could pull up. Can we pull up YouTube on Restream? Because I would love to show the audience some of the uh, trap, uh, trap stuff. If I, if I text it. All right, I, they're, they're gonna work on this for me, right? But you can put um, ASAP Ferg. ASAP Ferg is big over there. Those that follow the ASAP dudes, um, um, Waka Flocka, right? Was was over there. He left America, went over there, and they brought trap music. They brought something that in America was normal, right? Took it to China. It was an abnormal. It was an abnormal, right? And what that happens? They created a frenzy. They created a market, okay? These are just ways in which that happens. I, I really, thanks, I know brother's still coming in. We're talking about arbitrage, right? Arbitrage, again, is taking advantage of differences that are in the market, right? Differences, allocations across the world. And when you do this, when you start to think like this globally, I'm gonna say something. When you start to think like this globally, guys, it's gonna be hard for you to think like this over 20, 30 years, and not find something to make a to make a million. I tell you, I saw a bunch of brothers for a minute, Ghana. In Ghana, this has been happening a lot. There was a bunch of contractors and builders, right? Team, let, let me know when y'all got that up, when y'all got that uh the, the trap thing up. The, you said you're ready? Okay. Um, what okay, let me, let me get this point real quick. So Ghana had a lot of people going to Ghana, right? But Ghana needed like a ton of housing, okay, construction. So there was this big wave of contractors from Canada and America. Some of you guys may have heard about this. Brothers, brothers who were going to Ghana using their skill set, right, of building houses, building stuff. They went over to Ghana and they were selling houses cash. Cash money, baby. Like, literally, where? They were building the houses cheaper. If I mean I said teach, yeah, I know. But look, I keep my hand on the pulse when it comes to global business. I keep my hand on the pulse. They were, they literally, a house that would cost, let's say, 300, 400,000 to build in America. They were building the houses for like 50, 60, 100, 150,000 in Ghana. And the houses was going for cash, 300, cash, 400, cash, 500. And they had cheaper labor, right? They had hungry people. But I'm trying to tell you, man, this is how this thing works 
globally. You got to find in your space, right? I remember uh, even right now across different places. Man, look, I've been to places and I've been like, yo, if I could come live here, they don't have any car washes. Like car washes aren't even here yet. People are out in the street and they're just washing cars. There's not one automatic car wash. Not one. Not one automatic car wash. Right? The thing about that business, I know you got you to gotta know it. You got to live there. You got to do it. But here, again, I'm giving the point. I'm giving the point. All right? Hey, we're we, we going to try to play this real quick. We got we got the trap um, again. Show some trap music in China, and then trapping over in China because a bunch of brothers went over to China, right? And they brought trap music with them. Uh, team, you ready? E either one, black Chinese, it, don't, it doesn't matter. Black or Chinese, but they about to show this real quick. Y'all gonna trip out like Chinese people trapping? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know what I'm saying? Right in China, like doing the music that we you know have learned to love or learn the like over here, but they took it over there and took advantage of uh, arbitrage. Um on the fucking so. I mean, um, I sometimes say Bundru, sometimes say Konejiwa. Hey, that's okay. I don't know if I'm speaking the Russian or the English or the anything that I'm talking about. You don't need to know about. Right here, what that means, my street, this is Chengdu. You want to feel love and peace. Welcome to Noisy. I'm Wes Chen. Chengdu is the only city in the northern part of China. There are 1,000 people in the country, and there are a long history of life and a rich life. Oh, this video is sponsored by Chen Right, that we're we gonna put it for like 30 more seconds and we'll get back to the left. Hey, 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 All right. So look, the point, the point of showing you guys that was showing you a real life example of no matter what you think you have or don't have or you can't offer in another country, guys, if you're normal. If someone's abnormal, there might be a market created. If anybody is, is chiming with that, please put a one in the chat, right? Or better yet, also put in the chat, what are things that you think that you can offer? Let's go there. What are things you think you can offer, right, to other markets? What are things right now you're like, hey, I think this is something that I could offer to other markets that they may not have. It might be my normal but it's somebody else's abnormal, right? My normal, but somebody else, a perfect product. Let's go report you got. Like, let's talk about what the products or the services you all have that you think is your normal, but it's somebody else's abnormal. I just want to see what people put out there, right? And then we're going to wrap this up in the next couple minutes, but I'm going to give a couple more secrets to some things and ways of thinking. Remember, the point of what I'm doing, guys, here's the difference of what I want to do. I don't want to just teach you um, the what. Although, look, there, there are what's that we have to go through. There are what's. I don't just want to teach you the what's. All right, my man put event planning into place. Superfoods, herbs, relationship with the building the muscle. Yes. Actually, it's funny. Ripper, you're right. The whole nutritional health space is growing. Just so everyone knows, is growing in a lot of markets. The consciousness of like muscle building and health and nutrition and vitamins. That's that has been in America for a minute. That's been in Canada for a minute, but that's starting to grow in other markets like crazy. Thank you for that, right? My man has said multimedia festival. Yes, right? Those are things that we're used to here that you can bring to other places. You can bring that that talent, that ability to another place and do very, very well, especially if you know that space. Right, you can use that to do things very, very well. Right, all right, man. Thank you guys for participating. All right, so here we go.
I want to go into two more things. Here we go. Stay with me. Five more minutes, and then we're wrapping this up, okay? So one thing I want you guys to think about in doing global business, and my team's going to put this up on the screen, you want to look at bidding on government contracts, okay? Now, I know I got Dr. Marlon in the room. I know he does government stuff, but I want you guys to think about this, right? All right, teaching money management, another, another space. Getting government contract, governments, when they put out bids and things like that, they're not just looking for people in country, although they do look in country, but America included. We hire people from outside of the country, right, to do things when they bid on it, and they bid on it at the right price. All countries do this, okay? All countries, like all competencies, they got where governments know all competencies are not inside the country. So when they bid it out, they just want a good price and they want somebody that can do it. Go getting government contracts, another way to make money globally, all right? Now, here it is, right? The last thing I'm gonna talk about, and I can't get into this deeply, but I gotta talk about it because it's one of the things that I do in my own personal life, let you guys know, I do this often, in my own personal life, is something called I call global trading, okay? Global trading. What is global trading? Now, I'm not talking about the stock market. I'm not talking about the stock market. What I am talking about is being able, right, to get product, manufacture product, no matter what it is, it could be agriculture. I want to open your mind. It can be agricultural product. It can be physical product. It can be a wet, a wet product. I'm going to give you guys a couple examples of ways in which I know people have made millions in global trading. Let's get global trading on the on the screen, right? It's global. It's really global supply trading. Is what it really is. Global supply trading. People have made millions doing this, okay? All right, ready? Again, it can be agricultural. It can be uh, 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 agricultural. It can be physical. It can be wet. So I was visiting, uh, I was taking out one, one of my guys, uh, you know, buddy, he made a bunch of money doing, doing media stuff a long time ago, right? So basically, this is how it went down. So... He was in the um, like kind of chemical business. Oh, green. Here it is. He was in the green, <laughs> the green product business, right? Like those green cleaning products and stuff like that. Did anybody ever notice, right? Did anybody ever notice? Um, uh, uh, did anybody ever notice that? Um, uh, what was I about to say? That those green environmentally products, uh, friendly products. They're not that strong. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like they're kind of like, they don't hurt you. They're not harmful, but they're not that strong. Like you use it, you got to use more of it, right? Because the product just isn't that strong. The environmental cleaning stuff. So this is when that got hot. That, that got real hot like 10 to 15 years ago. Like being green and doing all that type of stuff, right? Like the products. So what he did, this boy went to, I think it was Malaysia or Vietnam, one of them. Malaysia, Vietnam, or China. It was somewhere in Asia, okay? He bought the big jugs, like the 55-gallon jug, right? Got the jug, brought the jug over, right, to America and basically, like, watered it down. Put it in really good packaging, green product. And then just was selling it out. He was telling me at the time they were buying the jugs. I believe the jugs cost like, it was like $1,500. It was something like that, right? By the time they diluted the product and put it in all the jugs, the retail value was $80,000. Now, I don't care who you are. 
if you buying a product, right, concentrate for fifteen hundred dollars plus shipping, whatever. So let's say you use that two grand, right? And then when you break it down and you put it in like the, the containers, you have a retail value of eighty thousand dollars. Man, that deserves a one in the chat. Somebody put a one in the chat on that one, boy. That, that's called making money. That's called taking advantage of an arbitrage. You see what I'm saying? That's arbitraging, right? And so, like, 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 these are the type of things that you can do globally. And again, I want to teach everyone here how to think. Because if I can teach you how, if I can increase your thinking, right? I can increase your productivity. I can increase the way you operate. I can increase, like it starts here. And the education and the information we have is what helps us to do things, how to see. Things. Now, now, look, for you all that didn't know that, you're never going to forget that again. Somebody took a concentrate product, watered it down, right? Because we all were green, green friendly, green, green, green. He created these all it was was the watered down cleaner. He took the same cleaner. He just diluted it three or four more times, but then sold it. $1,500 or $2,000 was retail value for him. $80,000. Okay? Made a mint. Made a bunch doing that, right? Okay? Right? So that, that's just one example. I'll tell you an example I have. Okay? Um, with like global trading. So I was in Africa back in 2000 and uh, like 16, 15, 16. I was in Rwanda, uh, Botswana, Uganda, everything, right? So I saw a bunch of brothers and the brothers were um, <laughs> like, dude, they were building houses and they were making the cement from scratch, old school. They had men, they were like, literally like um, using their feet to mix the sand. If you know anything about cement, you got to mix sand and you got to mix the, the concrete mix. You got to mix it all together to make co to make concrete. That's how it works, right? Like real, I, I have a video up. I can't show the video. They literally were mixing, mixing the everything by hand. They had a guy, he had a shovel, right? Now, in America, what's in America? We have something called concrete mixers. So I was in the market. I started asking around, hey, what's going on here? What's going on there? The concrete mixers in the region, this is a true story. Concrete mixers in the region were renting. To rent them was $6,000 a month. And you had to rent it for a minimum of three months. So that's $18,000 to rent a concrete mixer for three months. Guess how much the concrete mixers cost back home in America? The same concrete mixer costs $2,000. $2,000, brothers. So literally... I just made a play. I was like, well, this is simple. I don't care if they never give me the concrete mixer back. Let me go buy a bunch of concrete mixers, right? Ship them over to that region of Africa. And they were paying the three months up front. This was crazy. They were paying three months up front. Up front, three months, right? Let me buy the concrete mixers. You got y'all can do the math. Let me ship them over. That was like $500 a piece, right? Ship them over and then let the money roll. Anyway, I'm just giving you another example of global trading, doing global business. But again, it goes back to this right here. That word arbitrage. Gentlemen, today, I close out with this. Whatever you're doing, whatever you have, okay? Whatever you, 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 whatever it is you're doing, okay? Like, I'm asking you to think about your business, think about your space. What's the arbitrage? What can you offer that's a little bit different than what other people are, are offering, 
okay? What can you offer that is a normal to you, but abnormal to other people? It's abnormal. You understand, right? It's different. Where do you see supply demand differences, brothers? What are you, like, when you look at the market, when you look at the state you live in, the city you live in, the country you live in, right? What are products, what are services that you can offer, okay? When you can offer that don't exist somewhere else. It just don't exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't exist. Do you understand coffee? Do you understand at one point, coffee did not exist in most of the countries we're in? Did you understand chocolate did not exist at one point the way it does around the world? Do you understand there's still agricultural products that exist that still have not been traded or not being used, right? There's, there's medical secrets. There's healing secrets. There's all type of stuff that is bound to a certain region or a certain place because it only grows there, right? That you, brothers, can be the person to introduce it. You can be the person, right, to make millions off of it, right, if you can see it. And that's why I had to teach you guys today, Arbor, and even those who are in business now, and you're successful, and you're doing well. Like, I tell you guys, and one of the businesses, you know, I got a lot of different stuff I do, but one of the businesses I got, you know, um, um, uh, we're, we're, we're in the uh, last mile delivery, which means that the delivering of packages, we do stuff you know, whatever, FedEx, Amazon, all that kind of stuff, right? I'm waiting. I can't wait until, you know, Amazon, whoever, else, they expand to other countries. They starting to do it now because I'm like, yo, that's going to be the arbitrage because I'm going to land in that country or that region. I'm going to be one of the few people that know or understand at all, right, how to do that business. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do that business. We're going to win, and then we're going to see what else we're going to do, right? I'm just giving you guys the mindset. Like, as you think about your business, as you think about what you do, brothers, I'm asking you to think a little bit differently. Think about what's the arbitrage. What's the arbitrage? Think deeply about what's the arbitrage in your business globally where you can take what you have, your skill, your knowledge, your service, your product, and man, you can go get the bag. Man, look, bro, this was David Anderson, man, with more one million black men. We're going to be doing other programming, other things. Please tune in. I'm so happy you guys are here. I don't take this for granted. Look, I'm just trying to give out good content and good information so black men can win. My thing is that I want to help you win. I want to help more and more black men win. Win so you can help wealth creation for seven generations, right? That you can be economically free. You can be psychologically free, right? And you can go get it. Because you know what? Not many people are speaking to us. They're not speaking directly to us. So I want to speak directly to you, no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you are in the country, right? I want to speak to you about that. And look, all these things here, travel, I want y'all to hold tight. We're going to get some black men traveling. I know some of you guys are like, man, what do I start? What do I do? Don't worry. Just keep holding on, right? You guys are part of the inaugural group. Y'all part of the beginning. We're going to get black brothers traveling, right? Because if we travel, we get perspective. We see arbitrages. Our minds expand. We see things we didn't see before. And that's how you do wealth creation for multiple generations. I'm going to leave with this last story. I'm going to leave with this last story. Uh, this guy was not black, but um, I remember it, it, it was a, it, it's a company, they make locks. So they're in the lock. They're in the lock business. And one day I was sitting down with them. The company is like a $300 million company. They're on the fourth, count it. They're on the fourth generation. Fourth generation, Okay. Thank you guys for staying around for this story. And basically, fourth generation, making locks. And they started over in Asia, making the locks. They made the locks over in Asia. Now, mind you, they're on the fourth generation. 
they're still making locks. And I asked him, I said, man, how did you, like, how do y'all, y'all were over, over here like 40, 50, 60 years ago? He said, yeah, man, my great-grandfather, grandfather took my grandfather, showed him. Then my grandfather took my father, showed him. And then my father took me and he showed me. And I remember thinking, looking at that and going, yeah, that's what's up. And that's what we have to do as men. We have to take our sons, take our daughters. We just can't teach them and tell them. We got to grab them, right? And we got to take them with us. We got to show them how we do what we do, what we're doing. Because that, especially in the global marketplace, guys, when you transfer, when your son or daughter or whoever, when they think globally, you've just given them a gift that is bigger than any college, bigger than any, dude, you just open up their mind to something because now they're looking at the world like, whoa, wait, the world's like this? Okay, the world's like that. They have a global perspective. So again, one million black men, free us psychologically, financially and economically. And the last thing is wealth creation for seven generations. Team, thank you for staying. Appreciate you guys. Hey, we're going to play our spoken word at the end. That's what's up. Thank you, team. Thank you, everybody. One million black men. Calling, calling all black men. We're calling black men. Let's get the let's get the B roll. Let's go. Calling, calling, calling all black men. This is a call to action. This is a call to action. An action call. Calling, calling, calling all black men. This is a call to action. This is a call to action. An action call for one million black men. I am crazy to put you on a call path to win. This is not a Zoom call or a call on Facebook Live. Though we are virtual, we are live. Not a call on TikTok like MLB black men. We are on the clock. Not a call from Snapchat. Move back my bat. We are on first base to Isaac Hayes Jr. fan base. We have an eye lock on third base. Grand Slam, not a call from Instagram as we don't need validation with blue checks. We are the true checks. We do checks. We write checks. We are the right checks. We do family checks. We check in on our sons and our daughters. We are black men who walk on waters because our children like to FaceTime. We are black men who FaceTime. Let's FaceTime. This is still not a call from an Android or an iPhone. It is extraterrestrial to phone home. I know sometimes, black men, we have to travel around the world to be appreciated at home. But you are not alone. You are in the eat one, teach one, green zone, where the elusive weapon is the truth. We are the black truth. We are Paul Pierce, the truth. We are the loot. We are one million black men strong. We will get along as we landline. We walk across their blue and red line. Now this call is from a landline with rotary numbers and a coiled cord. We are one million black men on one accord. This cord and phone transmits a dial tone, whether a local call or a call of long distance. Regardless of the distance, it connected us. Social media unconnected us. Our homes need us. They sold feed us and not just food that give us niggas itis i write this our homes bleed sweat tears for us black men it is up to us it is on us not to just procure the bag boo the blessed one share it with me get the info under your afro bro and establishing sovereignty to be a one united bank for economic just us black men we must set up a family trust to an estate because right now everything is at stake because we can't lead from behind from your behind to your mind 
They are public with their melevance as they use artificial intelligence in this age of information. Elon Musk bought Twitter to gather more of our information. So if I have to be the Starlink, I will break the Starlink for one million black men. But I won't condone our culture with misuse of our information. So I grant you David Anderson for this financial literacy education. DA went from shy South Side streets to JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs on Wall Street. From Chicago State to Harvard. At 19, he fathered the economics in his family house. DA served in President Obama administration at the White House. He lived in China for three and a half years, learning the Chinese economy, the renminbi. To the British pound, black men, let's get this pound. To the European euro, we NBA step into the euro. To the Uganda chilling, black men, let's be empowered by our billing and be willing to learn and understand. Money is just a tool to build unshakable wealth. Seven generations deep that DA will teach that we can compete in an economy beyond that's local. Black men, we must think global. So I present to you David Anderson to put you on this financial literacy path to win. Welcome to the movement, one million black men.